here's a quick little primer that uh, you would think would be divinely simple, but it's not. There are four archetypes of ether and energy movement in the universe. Circular, radial, spatial, counterspatial. So you have spatial, counterspatial, circular, and radial. This, of course, would be our magnets. Now, of course, I have the dielectric inertial plane and crude analogy here, but you can see how you derive absolutely everything from one simplex principle of the ether plane. Take one single sheet of paper with straight lines with arrows on it. You can make circular ether modalities, centrifugal, centripetal, inertial, radial, divergent, convergent, charge, discharge. Nature does not move in straight lines. Obviously this isn't a perfect circle for obvious reasons, but the principles are the same. Nature has no straight lines. So why is everything in nature a vortex? Shells, magnetism moves in a vortex away from the dielectric inertial plane. Now this would be a perfect circle moving centripetally. It's inertial centripetal and is dielectric and these of course I do not have represented the centripetal returning vortex here to show you for a demonstration I only have the centrifugal vortex and both of these are wrapped the same way this one is moving clockwise and the opposite side is moving counterclockwise so what does this mean you take any fulcrum in nature, charge, discharge, convergence, divergence, centripetal, centrifugal, spatial, counterspatial, everything works off of one fulcrum in the universe, the ether. You can get all archetypes of energy movement and all archetypes of energy, dielectricity, magnetism, electricity, mass slash gravity, from one single principle. Radial, circular, centripetal, centrifugal, inertial, spatial. This would be spatial. There are no fields expanding into space. Space is a posterior attribute to any field. We have our centripetal, inertial, counterspatial, dielectric plane which drives the magnet, these are two forces that move opposite each other in a binding conjugate system. This is magnetism moving spatially, centrifugally and centripetally. This seems simplex, kindergarten grade level stuff, but there are electrical engineers, actually most, who do not understand this principle. This is how you can derive dielectricity, radial, electrical, gravity, magnetism, from one simple principle. These twisted cones, I just cut them right there so you can see inside. You see you have clockwise centrifugal here. I did not represent another cone for the returning magnetism. I should have put another cone in there, but it would have convoluted your understanding of things. In a true magnet, of course, this was the centrifugal, and you have another returning centripetal, but it would be looking it would look exactly the same except a smaller cone moving in the opposite direction towards the center so every archetype of nature works off of one fulcrum like a dog tied to a pole that's trying to move away from the pole as it moves around in its stupidity it draws a centripetal pattern it winds up the rope around the pole if it moves in the opposite direction, it's making a centrifugal uh, spiral pattern. But it is only moving radially. Just like anything in nature, everything has its own fulcrum. Charge, discharge, centripetal, centrifugal, spatial, counterspatial, divergent, convergent, circular, radial. If you do not understand this, you will understand nothing about what Tesla did. The fundamental principles of all energy and ether modalities and movement. This is how you can derive absolutely every principle in nature from this. Just as an analogy, this is a crude analogy, but I hope you get the understanding. If you do not understand this, you will understand nothing about magnetism, you will understand nothing about dielectricity, 
you will understand nothing about mass as it accumulates, i.e. gravity, because electricity terminates into magnetism and dielectricity terminates into the creation of neutron particles which ultimately, independently, immediately form protons, almost immediately, and therefore you have hydrogen. All other elements are created in galactic and solar formations. All dielectricity terminates into the creation of mass, i.e. matter. That is why mass is spatially accumulative, but its field is counterspatial, is centripetal. Now, please try to soak this in, because if you're trying to understand the principles, the archetypes of energy movement, you have to understand that everything in nature works like a fulcrum, just like a dog on a chain tied to a pole in the yard, moving around, wrapping itself up, moving the other way around, unwrapping itself out. That's a really crude analogy. A true analogy would be like two children on a seesaw, moving back and forth, spiraling off of a single fulcrum. And if you have a fat kid on one end, then you've got charge or discharge, representing the fat kid versus the skinny kid. It means everything is working off a single fulcrum, and that fulcrum is the ether. You will say, oh, well, the ether. Well, the ether is the principle behind Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, and before Einstein lost his bleeping mind, he said that relativity cannot exist without the ether. Of course, Einstein was a mental midget, and he reified space as something that does something, but space does nothing. All space is a posterior attribute to fields. Fields come first. Space is just a mental perceptual mind screw of human understanding as it's interpreted by our pathetic little senses. Space is a posterior attribute to spatial creation, expansion of centrifugal divergent fields, their interaction, their interplay. Of course, we're living in an ocean of fields upon fields upon fields. Our bodies are made up of magnetodielectric inner atomic fields wrapped within fields, uh, walking around in fields, inside the field of the earth, inside of the field of the heliosphere, inside other fields, influenced by other fields, upon other fields, compounded, infinite complexity, but divine, behind all of it is divine simplicity. Absolute, simplex, divine, extremely simple. So, understand the four archetypes of nature. Radial, circular, Spatial, counterspatial, convergent, divergent, centrifugal, centripetal. Everything can be derived from the single premise of this. Those are the four archetypes and the modalities of energy and movement in the universe. If you do not understand this, any further understanding upon the principles of gravity, magnetism, dielectricity, mass, gravity, they will be permanently blocked to you mentally in your comprehension. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for edition number three of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, third edition. We do out in mid-August and I will uh, continue to make some videos with some fascinating stuff in it. Uh, this should be fascinating, but it's something that nobody understands. It is extremely simplex. It is basic Euclidean geometry. There is a special methodology to understanding stuff like this. It's called platonic retroduction. It's a lost thinking art. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. And uh, email me with any questions or any videos about magnetism that you would like made and I will make them for you.